All right. Is this game visible? All right, it is. Good. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the stream. So today, uh, I'm going to be going over the arena uh, because it's sealed right now. And I'm also going to respond to this challenge. And uh, we're also just going to play some games. And I'm going to go over just, you know, what my thoughts are as we play. So uh, before we get into that, I just want to say hi to anybody that uh, is checking out this game. And basically, Epic is a, uh, it's a digital game that just got released recently. And it's out for Steam and uh, iOS and Android. And what's good about it is that you can play uh, against uh, other players, but you have everything, all the cards, right from the beginning. So uh, it's primarily a drafting game with also constructed. So basically, when you play, you can do a, a one versus one drafting style. And unlike other games where you have kind of like this mana system that involves resource cards, you just have gold in this game that uh, uh, determines what you can play every turn. So uh, you can play anything in your hand right from the beginning of the game. But I'm sure some of you already know about that. Yeah, don't worry, I got the audio this time. I'm not gonna be, <laughs> not gonna be fooled. All right, so uh, let's just get into it. So last time, uh, I started making an arena deck, but I didn't play any games with it. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about this. Basically, uh, what ended up happening was I saw this High King and this Noble Unicorn, and I wanted to pick up some good cards to go along with both of these cards. Basically, the reason is uh, Noble Unicorn, I think this card is very strong when uh, you can get it to work. So when you play it on, you can play it on your opponent's turn because it has ambush. So it's a champion that uh, basically uh, your opponent spends their gold in their turn to do something and then you play this down after their, go their gold has been spent. So you get to draw a card right away from the tribute. And then when your turn starts, you can play, you can spend your gold to play a good card and then draw another card right away. And so this is like a draw to attach to this body as long as you can get the gold uh, good cost card on your turn and also uh, your opponent your uh, you actually have the uh, good card in your hand but what's really good about this is that it can just keep drawing you cards so if your opponent doesn't get rid of this every time you play another good one cost card you're gonna draw a card and I think this is a really scary card so a lot of opponents will remove it after you've drawn two off of it, even if you don't have that many good cards in your deck. So I think it's a great card for sealed. Uh, High King, this card, if you have any loyalty twos, you should take a look at those because they tend to be pretty strong, but you have to have two cards of the same color in your hand when you use them. So yeah, the unicorn is great. Uh, someday, you know, we'll get another unicorn in there and then we can <laughs> start making a deck around unicorns. Um, so basically, this card is loyalty two, which means if you have two cards in your hand that are also good when you re when you play it, you can use it right away and it banishes something. So you, it's a remove anything that also leaves this on the board, and then you get to keep doing that every turn. So if you play this, then uh, your opponent has to deal with it, um, and it's a good way either to. Uh, get on the board if your opponent plays something you can play this and then you know banish it and uh, just get some advantage or you can try and wait until your opponent has run lower on cards and uh, hopefully they don't have a way to deal with it and you can just keep banishing things uh, but I mean a lot of people are going to be picking up some removal in this type of format otherwise uh, what I thought about the deck was we have a lot of really nice events. So cards like this that banish something and give us some advantage on if we play it on our turn. Palace card is like the same thing, but we can't play it on our opponent's turn. Um, and we have this draw to and another option with some zero cost cards. I'm a really big fan of Brave Squire. I think this card's great. I <laughs> It was a really good last, uh, last stream. 
Um, and then uh, we also had some good evil cards. So I ended up taking the Rift Summoner, even though it has loyalty too, because I figure I can just eat something that's small to make two demon tokens. Even without the loyalty too, that still is a lot of bodies uh, for one. So on the opponent's turn, this is a good way. If you think you have a lot of you know human tokens or uh, things like the Gudgeon that leave behind a body, but uh, it doesn't do that much. This is just going to attack your opponent for two every turn, but or block something, one thing that's really big, but uh, it gives you untargetable, then uh, it becomes a lot better. So, um, and aside from that, basically what ended up happening is I didn't actually have a lot of champions that I wanted to play in this deck. So I think I'm a little light. I have some really high quality, high quality options here, in my opinion, like stuff like the Sea Titan that will be really scary, but also does something when I play it. Um, but because I was light, I ended up playing this Rampaging Worm because I wanted another champion that, uh, another play I would want to play on my turn if my opponent spends their gold first, because I think in this deck, there's just Rampaging Worm and uh, Wing Death are the only cards that uh, I'd be really excited to play if my opponent spent their gold first. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So the way this format works is, uh, you get a pool of 60 cards and you make a 30 card deck. And then you uh, play against other people that have done the same thing. Uh, and every win you get uh, or loss gives you some gold and a foil card. And uh, there's a special reward for people that either get the most consecutive wins in a week or the most wins. Uh, and you get a free run every week. But I'm gonna be doing a special uh, pr promotion where if you play a game against me, uh, today, then uh, you will get some extra gems. So after we play this arena, I'm going to see if this uh, person that challenged me is still online. Otherwise, I'll just play games against other random people online. So, but if you do want to, uh, if you do want to do that, then just uh, go to play online in the challenge. Uh, put in my name, which is CJWWG, and you can challenge me to any format, uh, even even beginner if you want or random 30, but, uh, and if you beat me, then I'll, then I'll give you something a little bit extra. But in the meantime, we're going to play some arena. So hopefully uh, we can get some good games going in here. This tip is true. You definitely want some zero cost cards. <laughs> you know, I do think that uh, it is one of the things that trips people up is the one cost cards do so much, but if you have a handful of seven one cost cards, then you can't do anything uh, except for play one card. So it's better to have those uh, tricks. All right, we've got our game going. All right, so uh, the enemy is going first. So what that means is we wanna make sure that we have something to play on our opponent's turn and also something to play on our turn. So uh, probably this Temporal Shift or this Heinous Feast, they both seem like pretty good options. I'm always a big fan of holding on to a draw two in our hand. 
Uh, and then I don't think that we're going to be able to punish our opponent with this wing death, since that means they'll spend, we want to play this when our opponent has spent their gold first on our turn. They might play a really big champion, like a T-Rex or something, that we can get value out of this in the first turn, but I think that uh, I'd just be more excited holding onto this palace guard. So I'm going to toss the wing death, and uh, the little devil, uh, depending on what happens here, if our opponent just passes without spending their gold, then I'll keep this zero cost card as a way to antagonize since we have uh, we have some good options. All right, so they're gonna play Knight of Alara. This card, they're gonna reveal two Sage cards, a draw card, and that also tells us that they probably have a lot of Sage cards in their deck if they're willing to play this. Uh, and we're, we're gonna get some advantage out of this by uh, probably just returning it to hand and they are going to banish a card from their hand and we'll draw a card. The reason that I'm doing this instead of lying away is uh, we can't use this to draw two later. And also, that card's not the worst thing to banish, I mean to return to hand, because it doesn't have crazy come to play effect. So I'm going to start the turn, I think here, because uh, I don't have a good Punisher and the Gudgeon is such a good on turn play, I'm not going to worry about little doubling right now. Basically, if I little double attack and my opponent calls my bluff and spends their gold, then I don't have a good follow up. So that would have been a reasonable reason to hold on to the wing death there. Alright, so they're just going to draw two cards, that's fine. I'm gonna let them start their turn. We don't really need to play this out right now. We could and just beat them. But I generally like to play things pretty slow. So they have Sea Titan and Frost Titan, Frost Giant in their hand. All right, they're gonna wither our champion. That is a okay. We have two cards in your discard pile. So I think what we're going to do is uh, probably just banish this with Lying in Wait. We could jump it and then draw two, but I don't really think that uh, that is particularly good. So we're just going to go for that banish. Um, and then I'm going to play this because, uh, well, let's we'll see what our opponent does here. Probably going to pass. It, it's reasonable, like, it, the only reason that I'm not doing this is in case they have some kind of weird blitz champion. Uh, like, if they wanted to bodyguard and attack with a bodyguard, then uh, I would rather hold on to the word of summoning. If I do play this during the combat instead of at the end of the turn, then, uh, they don't get a chance right now to react. I mean, they're probably not going to do anything that they wouldn't have done if I played it during combat. But, all right, they're gonna guilt demon and attack. All right, that's fine. I'll take three damage. This has airborne, so I can't block it with my demon token. Uh, but I can get in with my demon token, which I'm going to do. Demon token coming in. Let's see what the opponent does. It looks like they're just gonna take it. And I am a-okay with that. So they have a Sea Titan and a Frost Giant. They're probably gonna play the Frost Giant. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is probably just play this Little Devil. And then... Um, attack with it. I just wanna put my some pressure on my opponent to uh, do something, basically. <laughs> All right, they're gonna Lightning Strike it, so mission failed, but we'll get him next time. Uh, I am not going to play any of these other cards because I don't really have a good play here. Uh, I could, like I definitely don't want to return that to his hand, um, but uh, the High King, it just seems, doesn't seem like the right time to play it since that's not a very, that's not very threatening. Ideally what happens here is my opponent hits me and then they play, the, they spend their gold on that Frost Titan or something. All right, they're gonna, oh, they're gonna do that. All right. That's fine. So this is untargetable, unfortunately, which means that uh, our we don't have very many answers to it. So in our deck, we have this board sweeper. That's pretty much it. We also have this wing death, which we tossed to the bottom earlier, so we're not going to see that for a while. Uh, and that's, that's basically our... And we also have this lying in wait, which we also just got tossed to the bottom. So <laughs> we're going to have a hard time dealing with that thing, uh, which is important to keep in mind. So I'm just gonna try and go off here with this uh, Noble Unicorn. See if we can just draw a bunch of cards from it. And if we can, then uh, that's good too. So because we have this Noble Unicorn out, I'm just gonna get this advantage by banishing that right now. This is actually working out pretty well because we have this Urgent Messengers. All right, they're gonna make it discard a card. I'm totally fine with that because I have this Ancient Chant to discard. That is A-OK. -okay. So we're gonna pass. 
And we are probably just going to have to take this. I mean, I could fumble it. It's not the worst play in the world. I mean... Alright, I'm going to get pretty greedy here. This is a very greedy play, but I'm going to go for it anyway. I'm going to place Urgent Messengers to draw three cards because of the Nova Unicorn. And then I'm going to fumble that, which gives it minus 10 attack. Recycling. So because I just did all of that, uh, this no longer deals any damage to me. So we don't have to worry about it... Uh, about it hitting us and making us discard a card and they draw a card. I just drew a lot, uh, probably more than I need, but uh, we could get really blown out by something that can kill off those tokens. All right, that's perfectly fine. See, this is this is the ideal, right? Is we, we draw a bunch of cards off of the Nova Unicorn and then we run out of cards to, uh, to uh, get advantage out of it with. And then our opponent thinks that it's so scary they have to get rid of it. So it's basically what we did. And we're going to block the Sea Titan here. The ties on targetable, so they can't give it uh, breakthrough with Rage or something like that. What's my favorite champion to use in this deck? I mean, uh, my favorite champion to use, uh, I mean, I have to say, I really like Kong. I really like this dealing 13 damage to a champion. But, uh, you know, I have a soft spot for Rampaging Worm. I think uh, Rampaging Worm is really underrated because people think of it as a card that uh, you play it and then your opponent kills it with something. But it's just so big. And if your opponent has spent their gold and their shields down and you just hit them for 14, that can easily close the game. So I'm gonna play this Muse here because it's gonna be really hard for the opponent to uh, answer it. And if they play Flash Fire, then they kill their own Thought Plucker. So I'm very happy with them Flash Fire. They're not gonna do that, which is a-okay. Unfortunately, we're still not finding uh, our Zombie Apocalypse, which is mostly what we want right now because the opponent is getting an even bigger board. Um, we're probably going to play this High King because I don't think we're going to have a good opportunity to get two more good cards in hand. Um, that means I think I have to do it before attacking. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a good way to get rid of that Thought Plucker, so that's a little sad. But... Uh, I mean, that might just be how it goes. We could ignore the Thought Plucker. I mean, we could banish a Thought Plucker and kind of ignore this and just block it with a random junk. Um, but that's kind of scary. <laughs> this could just get raged or something and then we lose. I mean, us discarding a card and then drawing a card is not great either, but I might even just hasty retreat that. Or I guess I could hasty retreat this. So this returns a champion to hand if it gets buffed. So I think the plan is actually to banish this um, Thought Plucker with the High King, just because I want to play it while we still have that. I don't want to be in a situation where I, I can't I can't get the advantage out of it. Uh, actually, the only downside is um, if they have like a deal two damage to everything, then we get really blown out by playing this High King here. So I think I am going to go back again to playing this Kong uh, just to kill that Thought Plucker. And then I'm going to pass. I think it would be also reasonable for me to attack with this Muse for 2 damage, but um, honestly, I think that it's just so threatening that I don't want to risk my opponent having like an Angelic Protector in their hand. If they spend their gold here, then I'll just attack with it. I'm not really worried. We have plenty of cards in hand anyway, so if they want to drop down a, uh, a Watch for Gargoyle, then we'll just play a Rage. Um, and then here, I think that we just want to pass. Um, probably going to uh, have to discard two cards, which means we could just Heinous Feast right now. I think that's pretty reasonable. We still have the Amnesia. Um, so I'm just going to play the Heinous Feast right away and then uh, discard probably the the Sea Titan. I mean, I want to hold on to all of our good cards. I also want to hold on to Haste Retreat and Amnesia. So it's Rage, Rift Summoner, or Sea Titan. So this is Sea Titan. Uh, it is really good solid champion, but I just don't see it really being helpful against both of these things. Um, like the Rift Summoner will keep making bodies for us to block with and also eating our blockers. It's just also annoying for these big things to block it. And Rage will really help this thing trade with one of those two. So I think that's what we do. We just discard the Sea Titan. Now, one of the big reasons I'm holding on to this Rift Summoner is because I can actually use it on their turn to eat this Huma token if they decide to play the Frost Giant. All right, here comes the Frost Giant. So 
So what I really like about this situation is now I can Rift Summoner and uh, I'm just trying to figure out exactly the right order for this, but I think it's Rift Summoner, uh, yeah, let's see, Rift Summoner can eat the human token. Probably gonna have to also play the Brave Squire this turn. We could Rift Summoner, Brave Squire it, Rage it, that kills the Kong. Then after, then when the next thing attacks, block with the human token, and then, uh, and then that is going to, uh, so yeah, we're gonna go, go, go ahead and I'll just show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna Brave Squire this, which is gonna give it plus five attack and a break this turn. Now hopefully they don't have exactly vanishing, because that would be very, very sad. That would, I would return this to our hand and we'd get really blown out. But they might, they probably don't have vanishing in their hand. That would be the main thing that would really blow us out. I'm gonna block with this Rift Summoner and then we have priority first, so I'm just gonna play this Rage so that it kills that. Great, that kills the Kong there. All right, and then I'm gonna pass to declare blockers here. I'm gonna block with this human token and then rake the human token to make two demons. They don't have a pump, like a rage or something because they just would have used it on that Kong for sure. And they're not going to attack because they wanna have some blockers. So that worked out really well for us and we get to draw two cards because of the Muse. So this is actually, uh, and we did draw that zombie apocalypse but I think at this point we're just really far ahead. So I'm gonna go in with this uh, Muse and uh, yeah. Let's see how that goes. Unfortunately, I did play the Brave Squire there, but I felt like it was pretty necessary. We got so much advantage out of it. All right, they're gonna—they're just gonna hurricane to deal my damage to everything. That's fine. All right, so let's see. We're probably gonna have to Zombie Apocalypse, but we can wait until it's their turn to Zombie Apocalypse. So I'm just gonna attack with this Kong, see if they want to take the 13. Probably gonna block. Like, if they were afraid of some kind of trick, I can't imagine them not blocking here. I chose the Battle Pass option, which uh, basically means that if they... Oh, they're not... Okay, they are blocking. I was really surprised there. I was thinking, wow. Very risky. <laughs> okay, and then... Uh, I mean, if we're going to Zombie Apocalypse, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. So I kind of want to put something that just can block that. Uh, without, um, I kind of want to hold on to all of these cards. We could play the Hasty Retreat. We don't need it because they don't have a pump card in their hand. I could play this Angelic Protector just to kind of make it so they don't want to attack, but yeah, I don't, I don't think that that is the plan. Yeah, Zombie Apocalypse is a really interesting board wipe. So it gives each player a zombie token for each champion in the discard pile. So I think I'm just gonna go for it. And uh, I mean, they're not likely to have a way to make me sad about this option. So I'm just gonna Zombie Apocalypse on their turn. I'm gonna banish uh, two events so that we get the maximum number of champions in our discard pile. And then this is going to break all champions and then we each get a zombie for each champion in our discard pile. So we got a lot of zombies there. They didn't have a flash, they didn't have an answer for Muse for a really long time. So they, they would have had to just draw one last turn or the turn before. This is the card I'm referring to. And if they did have one, they probably would have used it uh, so that we didn't just keep drawing cards. Right, they're gonna Corpse Taker, which will get their Frost Giant back. So we know they have a Frost Giant in their hand and we can also pretty safely say that they don't have an answer to uh, a million zombie tokens in their hand. So we're just gonna start our turn here. We, I could have played the Rescue Griffin, but they might have another off turn board wipe that uh, makes that not a very good play. So I'm actually going to attack one at a time here. Even though I could High King and kill that uh, Mythic Monster, I want my opponent to spend their gold first. And if they, losing this zombie token is not a big deal. Uh, it's, if they want to eat six damage and then I clear up all their other stuff, I'd rather know that now than uh, play my High King, banish their, mis their Mythic Monster, and then uh, I'm just gonna attack separately with two. Uh, and then they play a Zombie Apocalypse or something similar. I mean, that's probably not the best example, but you know what I mean? yeah, I'm just gonna get in with all of these. The opponent doesn't wanna block with this because uh, it 
can banish a card in our discard pile and also it can block a bigger thing later. So now I'm just gonna go for the High King. Um, I'm gonna reveal probably this Revolt since we're, all, we're probably gonna play it to draw two cards and also uh, this Angelic Protector because it's hard for this card to be like a really big blowout. I'm just gonna banish that Mythic Monster. I mean, this card can be really surprising if your opponent is attacking with something like an Angel of Death. So we know they have Frost Titan, so that might be relevant. All right. The reason I didn't reveal a card like Rescue Griffin is because I like holding on to my free cards. I think that, uh, when I say holding on, I mean keeping them secret. So what I mean is uh, if they attack with a Wolf Token, then we can get a lot of advantage out of that by just playing the Rescue Griffin, killing the, the wolf token, and then we keep this. So that is, we're gonna do something like that. We're actually going to uh, Raxus Curse here to make a demon token and uh, break another zero cost champion, breaking that. And this way the Raxus Curse is killing two wolf tokens. I mean, if they had another zero cost card in their, oh, they're gonna do something. If they had another zero cost card in their hand, like a zero cost champion, Oh, they're interesting. They're playing Crystal Golem. All right, sounds good to me. And then uh, they're doing something here, which, uh, oh, all right, that's why they did that. Well, I mean, that's fine. Not a big deal. I could probably play the Angelic Protector there to protect it, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're kind of putting on a lot of pressure with just these champions, right? We got six, so I think what I'm going to do is draw two cards with this uh, Revolt that we revealed. Uh, I could keep this to, to, as additional pressure, but I'm just going to do this. And then they're probably going to attack with that Wolf token, and then we can play this Rescue Griffin and block it. Oh, no, they didn't. All right. Sounds good to me. Let's get in with some zombies. So... Basically, what we're trying to do here now, this is where the Rampaging Worm comes in. <laughs> because they probably aren't going to want to take 6 damage when they're at 16. And having a board where I have 3 zombies and they have... Alright, this is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Alright, so uh, that's fine. Their wolf gets to eat that. And then we're going to see if they have an answer to this Rampaging Worm. This is, this is why I like Rampaging Arm. <laughs> and then we're going to deal two damage to all champions and players. And that's the game. <laughs> Alright, thanks for playing Magnet. You'll be getting some gems. Alright, and as a reward, we got... Ooh, a Foil Apocalypse. Okay. Uh, Alright. That worked out pretty well. I'd say that uh, overall I was pretty happy with our with a ratio there of, of high-powered answers. And even though we weren't able to deal with the Sea Titan, uh, we kind of dealt with it by making the board really big. So we got so, we got so much stuff just gumming up the board that uh, basically our opponent was forced to clear even though they had a really big threat in play. So that's also another strategy is if your opponent, uh, if you can just make it threatening enough that your opponent has to deal with the situation, then you can ignore the really big threats if your opponent, if you think your opponent is going to have to board clear. Um, all right, so uh, I'm, I'm just gonna take my turn here against Tour of Lust, and then, uh, all right, and then if, uh, if they come back, come and take their turn, which uh, they may or may not, because I got this challenge earlier today, then uh, then we'll continue playing that game. But for now, we're gonna try and finish this arena that we started. All right, we got a game against Marquito. Marquitos, 99-4. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. So the enemy is going first here. So that means that uh, I really want to keep this Noble Unicorn. It's extra scary too. I think uh, the Rampaging Worm is a little bit of a... Of a it's not, I'm not super excited to have it in my opening hand. I really want a good card to actually take advantage of this. And the Heinous Feast I also don't need because I have another really good draw to an Ancient Chance. So I'm going to toss those three. 
and just hold on to Noble Unicorn and Ancient Chant. Now, it's not totally crazy for me to have kept the Rampaging Worm because uh, basically the Noble Unicorn is scary. So if I play the Noble Unicorn and I attack, then it's likely my opponent will spend their gold first. But uh, it's just, it's kind of an aggressive play style for me to keep that and I'm much more of a safe player, so. All right, so they played this card, which makes two human tokens, and then it can't be damaged or die while other human tokens are in play. So they can even ward clear and they keep that uh, as long as they still had one human token when uh, they played it. Also, very difficult to block for that reason. So we could just draw two here, because the Noble Unicorn isn't actually doing that much, but I think we just go for it. And then uh, again, one of the best times to play a card like Muse or Thought Plucker is when your opponent really doesn't want to remove their own small things. So one of uh, a popular card is Flash Fire, which I think we have in our deck actually. And Flash Fire deals damage to all champions and players. So if they have Flash Fire in their hand right now, in order to kill this Muse, they would also have to kill their human tokens. So I'm just gonna... Mm, I don't actually really want to attack there. So I think uh, what we do is play this Forced Exile to banish target champion and the player who's turned is puts two human tokens into play. And I think we're just gonna go ahead and do it uh, to get rid of that 10-3 and grab two humans. Uh, and then pass. Now, uh, a lot of opponents, if they have some kind of removal in their hand right now, they're just going to think, wow, the Noble Unicorn just drew two cards. Oh, they didn't have a play there. Uh-oh. Yeah, so a big part of Mulliganing is you want to make sure that you have a play that you can play on your turn and on your opponent's turn. Yeah, so they just immediately got rid of the Noble Unicorn. We don't have another card in our hand that's good. So, Noble Unicorn in something like this format can actually get away with not having that many yellows to support it. Uh, so this is a good turn for the Rift Summoner because we have human tokens to eat. So I'll play the Rift Summoner and break a human token to make two demon tokens. I don't want to be stuck in a situation. This would also be a fine turn to draw two cards, but we're drawing two cards from use and I don't want to uh, be in a situation where I have this stuck in my hand and I don't have a small thing to break and I also don't have the two evil cards with loyalty too. So uh, I'm going to go for it. And then right now, we're just going to probably attack for four here. I usually like to keep my Rift Summoner up. Some people play conservatively, and they just immediately use it to eat another small thing before attacking because of something like that. But we get to draw a card from the Banishment there. So the player who's turned is draws a card from that. Now, they're probably going to block with that uh, Palace guard, which means that we can Brave Squire it, and then we get plus five attack on it, so it, it the Palace guard will die from that, from that trade. And then uh, that's one of the reasons why I didn't decide to do something else, was because uh, if even if they go for it just immediately, basically what they were probably thinking was, uh, oh, it's banished, was I would attack with the demon token, and then once they blocked with their big thing, then I would break, um, this is the card that I was talking about, I would break the demon token to drop to, to make two demon tokens, uh, and then their palace card wouldn't be able to block anything else. So I also really like Rift Summoner with combat tricks because your opponent basically doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to do anything that uh, will, um, they want to get rid of Rift Summoner before, and then they'll just assume that you don't have anything because you, your Rift Summoner failed. And I'm attacking with the Muse here because I have Rax's Curse if they play an Airborne Free card. Their gold is down here. So unfortunately, I don't have any kind of Punish card in the hand. I mean, I wouldn't actually be able to play the Rampaging Room right now because of that 1-1. One, one. So I think what I'll do is um, I'm just going to play Sea Titan here and return this Muse to my hand. This might look like a weird play, but uh, what I'm doing is making it so that if they want to clear the board, then I can redeploy this Muse after the board's been cleared. Because we've, already, we've got a reasonable size amount of things, and the Sea Titan is, ooh, that's also big. This is an 18-18, and uh, if it gets blocked, the rest of the damage goes to us. So uh, that's pretty big. I'm, I'm gonna draw two cards with this Ancient Chant. Uh, that Wing Death may be very, very good. 
And if I want to play a Splash Fire on their turn, which is, on our turn, which is somewhat likely, I don't want to play this Muse. So I'm just going to start my turn. I could also Raxus Curse that that one one, but uh, I want to make some attacks first. I'm just going to see what happens when I get when I get in with these human tokens. All right, we're just going to let it through. That's fine. So I think what we do then is we Raxus Curse that, and then we play Wing Death. Um, it's a little bit. Uh, we are definitely overextending here, but I think that is just so much advantage. We have to go for it. They only have uh, three cards in their hand, so the Wing Death, what it does is when you play it and also when it damages a player, they have to break a champion they control. So we just removed the human token, so they have to they have to break this Burrowing Worm. And then uh, we could pass, but I'm not going to because I think that uh, uh, they haven't spent their gold yet, and I don't want them to just start their turn. They didn't, they didn't spend their gold on anything on the first turn, so I'm also going to attack with these demon tokens. This is generally a riskier play because it would be pretty easy for them to spend their gold on something, but the fact that this Wing Death also gets in is, uh, um, if this hits them, then yeah, then we just we can just win with the flash fire. So that's the game. That was a very fast game. So Epic, in my opinion, has very varied uh, game speeds. So uh, Marquitos, uh, you'll be getting a uh, some gems after the stream ends. So uh, yeah, you can start another arena run. All right. So uh, yeah, right now we're doing actually quite well. We have two wins. Um, so I guess we'll just start another run. Yeah, we got wing death. There's like a there's like a bug or something in here, but it's not a big deal. Just let me know if you guys can hear it. Uh, okay, what is my favorite champion out of the ones you've used so far on this stream? Um, I mean, I really, I'm, I'm really a big fan of uh, the Gudgeon uh, in this deck. It's definitely among my favorite champions just in general. I think that uh, Time Walker is also just really, it's just probably just one of my favorite cards, but uh, it's, it's very specific. It's more niche, I think. Like, you wouldn't want Time Walker in every deck. Even though it has a loyalty two on it, it returns all of your all other champions, so you understand. I think it really shines when uh, you have lots of zero cost champions because you can you can replay those zero cost champions. So we kind of have an awkward start here. We're going first, which we went second both games, which worked out pretty well for us. This is what I was talking about. So in our deck, the only card that we would really want to play going first is the Gudgeon, um, maybe Sea Titan. Everything else, I mean, you could slam a Rampaging Worm and attack, and I would be comfortable playing Little Devil and attacking, but we just don't have any way to uh, do anything crazy here. So probably what I'm going to do is just toss the High King and keep the rest. Um, I don't think we have a very high chance of digging to a card that we want on the first turn, and these cards are all pretty reasonable. Uh, I'm going to play the Urgent Messengers by spending my gold first. I think some people don't do this, but... Uh, I think the Urgent Messengers is a special case. I'm pretty happy to draw two cards and make two human tokens on my turn because it's hard for my opponent to spend their off turn gold to do something which is stronger than that. Now they're going to Angel of Light and just gain 5 health. That is perfectly fine. If they want, they can even get in for 5. Now we could play this Angelic Protector, but I don't, I don't think it's particularly worth it. We do have these human tokens, so we aren't really at a very high risk of anything happening, but uh, if they want to pass the turn, I'm happy to start now that we have this Gudgeon. Seems like a pretty nice... Alright, yeah, we're just going to start attacking with these human tokens. Yeah, so I actually like this Palace Guard play better than the Gudgeon, because uh, the Gudgeon would put us at one card over, and this just contests the board. So we don't we stop taking damage in the air. I think uh, it's perfectly fine to take a little bit of damage just to keep tempo. So it can be uh, it can be pretty like that one turn uh, where the opponent spent their gold first, and then you, you can just hit them for a lot because you have some trick like rampaging worm and rage or something like that. Uh, then we we would just want to play around that a bit by uh, 
respecting what our opponent could have. So I tend to play more conservatively for that reason. I'll frequently not spend my gold first if my opponent isn't really pressuring me very much. Uh, but I only did that because I had a good play on my turn. If I didn't have that good play on my turn, if I was kind of struggling either way, I might just go for the Angelic Protector. All right, so they're gonna play this Avenging Angel and just attack. So this is a little risky because I could have anything that removes a card uh, to stop it. I'm actually gonna play this Injunct Protector and it'll make a champion unbreakable on targetable this turn, choosing itself, and then block the uh, this Avenging Angel with it. Um, now Avenging Angel is a very interesting card, so it, it uh, whenever it deals damage, you gain that much health. And then whenever it attacks, it becomes expended, right? And now we can't attack because the Avenging Angel is there and expended. So if we want to attack next turn, we have to deal with it. But luckily we have this Lightning Strike. So we just dealt with it. And then our turn starts and uh, our opponent has gained a lot of health. And they have more cards in hand than us. So I'd say that we're not necessarily winning here. We are ahead on board. But if our opponent played a board wipe and uh, we didn't have a good answer. Uh, Alright, so I'm just going to heinous feast this right now so that they can't get this back. So whenever they play an evil card, this goes back to their hand if they pay a health. I don't want to deal with that. I'm just going to heinous feast right now. They might want to like block and then play rift summoner or something like that. So I'm just going to get rid of it right away. Basically, when you are, um, the way that priority works in Epic is, uh, that's a fancy term for the player who can play cards. Uh, once you block, you get the chance to play cards again. So they could block and then they could play Rift Summoner, uh, return that Plentiful Dead to their hand, and then reveal that and another red card to make a demon token, and then eat this zombie token to make two demons. I mean, that's just a hypothetical. That's probably a worst case scenario, but, uh, Basically, there's no reason to play into it. Right, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to play this Gudgeon and then, and well, I really don't actually need to play the Gudgeon because I am pretty far ahead on the board and they just spent a card and I just spent a card, so I think I'm just going to pass here. I could group attack with both human tokens. I don't really feel like I need to. If I did that, they might they might take two, or they might block with the zombie token. Yeah, all right. I'm fine, I'm fine tossing both of these in. Maybe this means they're going to play a huge Blitz Champion, because it seemed like they wanted to get rid of those human tokens. In general, I would say I'd rather, almost always rather have two humans instead of one. Um, oh, interesting. I'd almost, rather always have uh, two human tokens than one zombie token. So what's interesting about this card is it deals some damage to a player and all of their champions. So they were actually probably planning on playing this on, on our, our turn to kill both of the, the two human tokens. But it recycles and we banish the discard pile so we incidentally turned this card off by playing the heinous feast uh, really reactively there. So I'm just going to play the one cost card just because I like having more zero cost options and I'm about to draw a lot with this Gudgeon on my turn. So I'm gonna go up to, uh, what's eight, seven cards in hand. So this is a perfectly reasonable time to play in the attack with Little Devil. The reason is um, I have a fine number of cards in hand and we have a really good Punisher with Wing Death. So after doing that, I'm just gonna play the Gudgeon. I don't need to, I could just pass, but uh, honestly, I prefer to get the cards, so I'm going to draw two. Yeah, Wing Death, personally, I find Wing Death to be, um, it, it has ties and it's lows, so when it's good, it's amazing. But if your opponent has a couple of small champions out, then it's not so great. So uh, you really want to play towards it if you want to play it. And at three health, it'll frequently get removed for zero. All right, so opponent's going to play that. That is going to... When they play another green card, it'll deal six damage to uh, one of our things. So uh, that means they're probably going to use it to take out this little double. Oh yeah. Honestly, I'm not sure what color our opponent is heavy in. Probably evil if they're playing Plentiful Dead, but at the same time, 
I could totally see playing this in a deck that didn't have a lot of evil. All right, they're gonna gain control of our little bow. That's fine. We might even be able to get some value out of it by returning it to our hand with a hasty retreat at some point. But they'll draw a card. All right, so they're gonna play Urgent Messengers to make two human tokens and draw two cards. That is a-okay. So now this Wing Death becomes a lot worse because they have those random human tokens. That's an example of what I'm talking about. I'm gonna play this Ancient Chant to draw two cards. Um, then I'm deciding whether or not... Okay, so we have the Sea Titan. So we're going to use the Sea Titan on the Little Devil once after we attack. That'll be our play for the turn. All right, they're gonna they're gonna Pegasus and get in for two, and uh, I think we're just gonna say. I mean, honestly, it's not threatening very much. I mean, I kind of just want to deal with it and get the demon token out there. Axis Curse is kind of a weird card where you want to use it aggressively because you want the demon token so you can attack with it. <laughs> it's like a demon token that also breaks zero cost champion, but I want that demon token. I can be aggressive. Putting pressure on your opponent is great because uh, you can force them to act first, which even if you're behind uh, in terms of card and health and board, when your opponent acts first, then they uh, make your options for gold much stronger, like this Wing Death. So now I'm gonna play the Sea Titan and toss that little level back in her hand. That's the main weakness to gaining control of your opponent's stuff is a lot of the cards that balance are actually pretty good. Like, I'm very happy to play the Sea Titan and this Temporal Shift. Although, you don't want to ban you don't want to return your own champion back to your hand with Temporal Shift because then you have to banish a card from your hand. But, uh, Haste Retreat is nice. It doesn't actually, it's not particularly amazing. It just prevents you from getting blown out. Okay, cool. I have to give a, I have to give a special uh, I'll, I'll have to actually look and see who it was. But there was this one person that uh, completely blew me out. It was like uh, turn three or five or something like that. And they just, they had, they attacked with Rampaging Worm and it didn't have anything and they played a million things on it and I just died and it was glorious. All right, it's my turn. Uh, they played that Memory Spirit. What did they get back with Memory Spirit? All right, they got the Siren Song. They want to take my Demon Token, I guess. Uh, well, I'm not going to attack with that little double. They can get in for five, that's fine. We can totally get in for five. Yep, you got it. Taking five. I'm not afraid to take damage. I'm targetable. <laughs> Alright. Does anyone in chat have any favorites? Can you tell me what your favorite is? Favorite champion or favorite card? Ooh, all right. They're going to break all champions with those two cards. Rift Summoner and Spawning Demon. So they did have the Rift Summoner in their hand. That's what I was just talking about. All right. So let's see. They have one. They have two champions in their discard pile, and we have one, two, three, four champions in our discard pile. So I'm actually going to use this uh, Zombie Apocalypse aggressively to make a bunch of zombies for us. All right. And, you know, it's not super necessary, but I think that in general, it's nice to keep the... I'm perfectly fine using the Zombie Apocalypse as a way to just maintain uh, board presence. I just didn't have anything else to put on the board, and I could con the uh, Angel of Death, but... Uh, so we do have to look out for the uh, Spawning Demon and the, um, the Rift Summoner. So if we can get the Rift Summoner out on this turn, then we can con it, which would be nice. I'd also be very happy trading in all of these zombie tokens because then our wing death becomes better. Now, something I didn't expect to happen was that our Rift Summoner would uh, will have low to two four probably. All right, so they're gonna play the we're gonna, they're gonna play that uh, Spying Demon, which is fine. I'm fine with that. All right, they're not blocking that the zombie though. It's interesting. Well. Hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, this is basically two demon tokens, so we could just Kong it. It's not the most amazing Kong in the world, but uh, I don't know. I'm not really worried about them playing another board wipe right now. They have, they know we have this little devil. Uh, so probably what happens right now is they play Rift Summoner. They remove their own zombie token to make two demon tokens. And then on their turn, they uh, have to spend their gold to do something else because they can't attack a demon token through this Kong. So in general, when you only know about some of the cards in your hand, you can just play as though that's their plan. Yep, they're going to play the Rift Summoner. Because, you know, a lot of the time the opponent doesn't have the luxury of revealing which cards are actually good uh, loyalty targets. So they could play this Revolt on attack to get in 5 damage by attacking with the Revolt token and the Zombie token, but uh, I'm kind of expecting for there to be a lot of, of these um, various... Uh, demon tokens, so I think I'm just good with it, with the way things are shaping out right now. We might end up using this Revolt, uh, plus this Rift Summoner in conjunction, so that's fine. I'm going to block with this, and then I think I will send my gold first here, just because I think it's very valuable to return that Rift Summoner to the owner's hand, and they can banish a card from their hand. So which, this is nice because uh, what happens is the opponent uh, if they want to break this demon token to make two demons, they have to replay the Rift Summoner. But, uh, alright, and they banish a card. And we'll see if the opponent does something else. They could play the Rift Summoner again here, which is also possible. Do they, they didn't have loyalty 2 for the Rift Summoner last time, right? Yeah, so they're unlikely to have it again. Or they're unlikely to have it after drawing a single card, I mean. I guess they're trying to figure out what to do. Maybe they... I mean, we have haste retreat, so I'm actually really not worried about them punishing in some way. It looks like they're going to fumble to save their demon token. Interesting play. So if they swing in with this demon token, then I think I'm going to play this Art of Summoning to block it. But I would prefer for them to commit the demon token first. All right, so they're going to palace guard that. All right, that sounds good to me. So I'm gonna play this Word of Summoning and banish two... Uh, do we have anything in our deck that cares about that? We don't have it. I don't think we have any recursion. So whatever we put on the bottom just matters for Zombie Apocalypse and uh, uh, Necromancer Lord that the opponent plays. And so I'm gonna get rid of the Sea Titan because that would be very bad because they're playing an evil heavy deck. So it's not ridiculously unlikely that they'll have Necromancer Lord in there. And that card is a champion that returns another champion from a discard pile to play as its expendability. And if you reveal two evil cards when you play it, then uh, Spore Beast. Yeah, Spore Beast. Spore Beast is nice. <laughs> Spore Beast is so fun to play in those wild versus wild decks where you have a wild deck and they have a wild deck, but you have Spore Beast. And then all of their, all of their rages and lashes just don't really do anything. All right. I'm not sure what they're going to banish here. Probably the Gudgeon to uh, get three health. And they banish. Hmm. Oh, they banished, oh, they banished our palace card. All right. So we're going to start our turn. Uh, hmm. So I think what I'm going to do here is just group attack with two zombies. This will probably look like I'm about to board clear, maybe. Or it'll just look kind of weird. Maybe like I have a pump. So after blocks, I'm just going to Brave Squire to uh, to remove that uh, Palace Guard. It'll be interesting to see what the opponent decides to do here. I'm not sure. Honestly. Uh, let's see, they still have the Rift Summoner. Maybe they're considering just playing Rift Summoner and breaking this Palace Guard to make two to make two Demon Tokens. That would be fine. Then we would banish it and make two humans. 
Now, one of the really nice things about having Ancient Chant in your discard pile is that you don't need to hold on to a draw two like you normally would. You can spend your gold to recall it and then draw a card later. All right, they are going to play the Rift Summoner. Don't have loyalty. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. So, do they still have that Siren Song? All right, they still haven't played Siren Song. So they still have that card that gains control of a zero cost champion and then we, um, we, and, and expends it. Um, so we might want to look out for that for the little devil. I'm not sure, they might just need to use it to draw to at this point. We've just been holding on to this little devil for, for a while at this point. Uh, we could force exile, I think. That's probably what we end up doing. I mean, it just seems like a pretty good time to do it. And then maybe we can get some really high value out of this revolt, which I didn't expect. And it gives all of your good champions, so your humans are good champions, plus two attack this turn. So yeah, we're just gonna pass. health again. So this card each turn it gains three health by banishing a champion in a discard pile, but they actually only have one more champion to banish and then they can't gain three health anymore. But it's not negligible. Gaining nine health, even the six health that they've already gained is a lot to gain for a zero cost card. Because we also have to deal with it. I mean we don't, but they can keep banishing their own okay. They can also keep banishing their own champions. So here I'm gonna just go for the uh Go for the Rift Summoner play here, so I'm just gonna block with a, a human. And then play this, making a demon token by revealing two evil cards. And then I'll break the human token and make two demons. And again, this is an aggressive play. I uh, think I could probably take the damage, but when you're in a situation like this, where if things keep going, like if you're not going to turn things around on your turn, then you need to be the one who spends your gold first. And I'm not particularly excited about drawing a lot of outs here, so I think I just have to take the first step forward. And this uh, Rift Summoner is quite good because we were able to get the loyalty too, so I want to do that while we can. And also, we have Human Token. So we get to not only, normally you play this card with loyalty 2 and you break the Demon Token that you get from the loyalty 2 to make two Demon Tokens. Here, we got to make a Demon Token from the loyalty 2 and then block a human token that was blocking to make two demon tokens. So we got Rift Summoner and three demon tokens uh, for our gold because the human token was going to die anyway. That's value. <laughs> I like value. <laughs> I'm a big fan of value. <laughs> oh man. When I say value, for those of you who don't really play Mitch card games, what I refer to is uh, when a card gives you an additional advantage or bonus effect that uh, you wouldn't normally get. So when you get when you play a swing death and uh, your opponent has uh, a really powerful champion, like that time we were able to kill the burrowing worm, I, I, that's value because uh, normally, oh, that's fancy. Uh, normally this card only picks off, you know, some medium-sized things or one thing and then it gets removed by a zero-cost card. But it's unlikely that your opponent just have, it's not super common that your opponent ha happens to have a really big champion like that. So what happened there was they played Lightning Storm to deal, to kill a demon token and a zombie token. I'm surprised they didn't kill two humans or the zombie, so maybe they have a plague or something. Uh, and uh, then they banished this card that is, was the bottom of, that uh, has been in their discard pile for a while by, when they played the green card to deal six damage to a champion. So and it's an interesting card, Smash and Burn, because you can play it in a deck that doesn't actually have a lot of green cards uh, as long as you're willing to wait and you don't, want to, you don't need to get the effect right away. So I think that because these cards are banished, they can't have Plague because Plague is in their bottom 10 cards. Or rather, bottom 11, I think, because of that uh, Sage card that banishes a card to the bottom. So this card will give plus two attack to all of our humans. So we're, we're going to see if we can get some advantage out of that this turn. 
if we can, that would be that would be very nice. That would give us nine damage out of these two human tokens and this zero cost card, which would be pretty insane. So I'm going to go in with this human with this zombie here, and then I'm going to attack with the human token and wait until after blocks to play the revolt. And again, I'm not too worried about losing a uh, about losing my all my draw twos because of the ancient chant. So here they're actually getting really punished for not lightning storming the two humans instead of the one zombie token. And like I was saying earlier, I generally will always prefer to have the two humans to the one zombie because just having it split up among multiple bodies is very good. So we could just, you know, go absolutely crazy and play this rampaging room and attack. And then if we hit them, we probably win. Uh, it's actually not that unreasonable because their best play on their own turn was lightning storm. Uh, so it's not crazy that their plan this turn is to recall this lightning storm. So I think that uh, just for the fun of it, I'll go for it. I think normally what I would do is probably just, I don't know, uh, probably, uh, probably just uh, recall ancient chant, I think, in this position. Yeah, so they did have an answer. This is actually fine because what happens is uh, we both go down a card, but we get we get a wolf token. So this is advantage us in this situation. Um, all right, and then I still don't really want to play this little double on attack because our opponent has that siren song, and I don't I don't want to hasty retreat it and have them draw another card. So I'll just uh, I'll just wait on that. Wait until I redraw a C Titan or something. They want to hold on to that. Uh, I mean, I guess one thing that we should consider is that this Muse will eventually come up. So we should probably little double and swing uh, pretty soon. I mean, one other nice thing about Sea Titan is that you can return your own Blitz Champion to your hand, and then you can replay the Blitz Champion and attack a second time in one turn. See, that's not value, but I also like that. That's also something I very much enjoy doing, is uh, doing something ridiculous. Get my water here. All right. Looks like we've got them. They're thinking tanking right now. I wonder what they're thinking about. They're, they might be thinking about using that uh, Siren Song to draw two cards. They might be thinking, should I draw two cards or not? Because, uh, or should I recall this Lightning Storm? Or should I just pass? They haven't used this Corpse Monger. They've only got a minute left. They can't use this, they could use this Corpse Monger, but maybe they're just shy, trying to decide whether to banish the Gudgeon or the Rift Summoner. I'm not sure. All right, they're gonna recall the lightning storm. It's fine. And we are gonna recall, almost just pass there. We're gonna recall this ancient chant and draw a card from recalling it. All right. They're gonna leave that open for blocking. That's interesting. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, hmm. we have to play pretty quickly here. I think what I'm gonna do is just start getting in with these Mm, how do I deal with this? I just don't want to attack with one human token, but I think I would like to set up a flash fire to clear this board here. I wouldn't mind actually playing the wing death if it means removing the corpse monger, but I don't want to play it before my opponent spends their gold unless the corpse monger is the only blocking champion left. So I think what I'll do is I'm just gonna try and push some damage through by going like an attack like that. See how the opponent wants to block that. If they wanna block that with the demon token, then I can group attack with the other ones. All right, that's fine. I'm happy to do trades right now because uh, I just wanna clean up the board so that I can get value out of wing death at some point. Take that. Um, I mean, it is kind of weak to just random 
shoot effects, but I'm just gonna play the wing death here. This way, this is this is effectively dealing three damage to them because they don't get to use the corpse monger. And then I'll pass. And now they can't play an ambush ground champion because then I'll hit them with the wing death. So they basically have to spend something to remove this. So if this is just tribute, destroy your opponents or uh, corpse monger, then I'm fine with that for this game. All right, looks like our opponent's gonna run out of time, unfortunately. Um, I, that's really my least favorite way to win is when the game run, goes to time. I think I do in general prefer chess clocks like this, where it's like each player has their own clock because uh, I do tend to take long turns sometimes, but uh, I am pretty good at managing my time and thinking less when I need to think less. All right, and I don't like to, uh, yeah, that was unfortunate. I don't like to, uh, I think, I just feel like the victory, it wasn't a full game when one person loses the time. I just, it feels like we were both cheated out of a good experience there. Um, I mean, I think that we were, we were doing pretty well, but um, yeah. I guess what I'm getting at is keep an eye on your timers, everyone. <laughs> That's that the moral of the story <laughs> is uh, <laughs> keep an eye on your timer. All right. Uh, I mean, we can, just, we can just see how far this arena goes, I guess. So far, so good. Let me just check on that. I'm just going to check on that game, and then I'll rejoin. Uh, all right, yeah, so our opponent did not has not made their turn. So it looks like they just challenged me, and then they did something else, which is fine. But if any of you, if any of you in the chat want to challenge me, then uh, feel free. <laughs> all right. Make sure you have enough cards to play on your opponent's turn. This is true. So unfortunately, I think uh, was it Mar Mar Marquios Marquios uh, was really put into a hard spot on their first uh, game on the first turn when it was our turn and uh, we did something strange, but they just passed. Uh, I guess they played something on their turn, and then on our turn we did something strange, and they passed. And they didn't spend their gold. And I'm pretty sure they were holding on to that banish banishment that they played two turns later. And uh, I guess some of you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But banishment uh, banishes a champion, and the player whose turn it is gets the draw card. So if you play it on your opponent's turn, then they get the draw card. So I think what ended up happening was... I played some kind of low value champion, like uh, when I say low value, I mean a gudgeon or something that you don't want to get rid of, or at least it's not it's not worth getting rid of it and your opponent drawing a card. So what ended up happening was our opponent uh, just had nothing to spend their gold on. Sometimes the best play. Yeah, see, I think that uh, passing is a very difficult thing to learn in Epic. And honestly, people that come from different backgrounds playing this game, it's interesting how they all have different uh, old habits that they fall into. So sometimes I'll see players that uh, will just try and attack with everything as a group, or they will um, uh, basically something like give your champion that gives your champion a buff right like plus four plus four or plus four offense plus four defense is much worse than uh then uh you can't use it to save your champion i guess is what i'm trying to get at <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there in a long longer winded all right i've seen your deck i mean that's fine if you want to do that but that's totally fine <laughs> matt i i can actually just go into this arena a little bit later yeah, I'm not really worried about it, but um, yeah, I just uh, I'm hanging out. But uh, it's your call. If this gets if this gets to maybe you know 30 seconds, then I'll just uh, yeah. All right, I'll just uh, play another real time game here. So um, let's see. I feel like Dark Draft is the one that I see the people playing the most in queue. So I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna play some Dark Draft. I think Dark Draft is pretty fun because uh, you get to 
it's a limited format, so every game is going to be very different. And uh, yeah, I, I like drafting. I mean, honest, constructed is also very fun. I think I enjoy constructed more than uh, uh, people that really don't like deck building because I just really, I really enjoy deck building. I think deck building is one of the funnest parts of card games, and that probably puts me in a smaller portion of the uh, <laughs> of the. I don't know, card game players, then uh, uh, people that just want to, oh, all right, the cutter, let's go. All right, so uh, first pick here. I am just a really big fan of uh, cards that let you draw two cards and they can do something else. So I think I'm gonna take this crystal golem here. Now, gold dragon gives all of your good champions righteous. Uh, and Banishment is a reasonable removal card, but I'm not really interested in it uh, near the middle, at the beginning of the pick. It doesn't, it doesn't excite me very much. Crystal Golem, I, I feel like uh, this card, I can really play towards, you know, blocking a big thing and then drawing two cards or uh, uh, just playing it on your opponent's turn and attacking them. And this is more of a, you need a lot of human token cards to really get this card to its full potential. And Belling Minotaur is a card that I'm not very excited about in general. Uh, so from here, let's see what we got. So we just have the Crystal Glom. Now, I think I just want to take both of these wild cards. Uh, now, a lot of people really, I think that uh, having a way to clear the board is definitely very powerful and good to have, but uh, I wouldn't take it over a card that was especially good. And I think I want to try and move into green here. So now the cutter, uh, he's, I think I, that he'll probably know sort of what I'm up to, but I'm just gonna start taking the, the cards that are green and very good. Uh, we've already got a really good shell here because Fire Spirit, whenever you play another green card, you get to deal four damage uh, to, uh, uh, to another champion. Um, so it, it really works well with if you have a lot of green cards because it draws you a card when you play it. So. If your opponent removes it, it's no big deal. Uh, and then Hunting Raptors will deal four damage to them or to one of their champions every turn. And if you play it on their turn, then, uh, oh yeah, let's just do that. All right, we're just gonna try and uh, burn him out here with all of our cards that just go directly to, his, to him. Uh, so that means I'm not gonna take this battle cry because it doesn't do very much in my deck. This Divine Judgment is reasonable and so is this Raxa. So it's really a question of those two. Do I want to clear all or do I want three six sixes? Um, I am a bit worried about him taking a really powerful evil pile here. So I think I'm going to take the Raxa. Uh, the Divine Judgment is also quite good in my deck and I'm being pretty greedy by not taking any clear alls, but I just don't want to uh, pass him Raxa and Angel of Death in the same pack. And I think we passed some other good evil cards. Eh, nope, not really. All right, so I'm gonna take this Lightning Storm and then, uh, I don't know. Not really excited about any of these strongly. I don't want to put Vital Mission because it kind of goes against what I'm doing. I think I'm gonna take this Marcus just because a lot of people like to play the cards that make you discard cards and I'll hold on to it the whole game. So here, there's a lot of good options. Sea Titan, Second Wind, Haste Your Tree are all good choices just in general. I think Sea Titan will just be very hard for my deck to fight against because it's big. Uh, so I'm gonna take the Sea Titan. And it's untargetable. So if I end up taking a lot of green cards, I'll have a hard time removing that. So I'm gonna take that. And then I'm gonna take this Citadel Scholar as a recycle for zero. We have no recycles so far, so we definitely want some of those. And then I could take uh, either of these, I think. Um, I'm gonna take Quell, probably, just in case, because I have no board clears. And I also think that uh, if he is playing some kind of token strategy, then I'll have a way to clear off all of those uh, and draw a card. So we're gonna do that. Um, I don't actually know what he's in right now. He might he might be trying to do something good with this gold dragon, and that's why he's passing me all the aggressive cards. But I am not gonna play around that. I'm gonna take this fireball. The main reason I'm not is because uh, it would be really tough for me to take this gold dragon. I mean, this pack isn't particularly exciting. Uh, oh, looks like he, the timer ran out for him, so he'll just get a random card.
unfortunate. All right. Oh, yeah, I got the Raging T-Rex. It's probably decide, trying to decide whether or not to take that from me. And I think... The question is, do I want Wave of Transformation or Frantic Digging? I want the Frantic Digging. I like zero cost cards with Recycle. What can I say? All right. Here, I want the Rachel Gargoyle for basically the same reason. Miss Guide Herald, honestly, I think that it is a bit overrated in uh, limited formats like Draft. You really want a lot of good targets for it. And while it would be reasonable in this deck so far, uh, it's a very good chance that I'll pass it to him and it, he won't want to take it in his deck. So I'm going to take the card that will be good in either of our decks over the card that will be good in my deck, but probably not his. I'm going to take uh, probably both of these zeros here. I'm very happy to get these because I don't really have a lot of zeros in this deck. And uh, that'll help me out with just uh, my general strategy. All right, here. Uh, I mean, I like this flash fire a lot, and I also like that silver dragon. I mean, I have a lot of on turn plays, so I might not want to take the uh, the silver dragon. So I'm going to take the flash fire mainly because it's a draw two, um, and also it's green, so it synergizes with what I'm trying to do. Here, I'm going to take the Plague and the Dark Offering. I really want to take that Necromancer Lord. I think it's extremely powerful, but we're just too late in the draft to take it. So, uh, And the Chamberlain Kark, I can't really swing either. All right, this is also a tough pack because Kong and Lash are both very strong. But I think, again, um, Kong will be good in either of our decks. Lash, I think, will be... hard. My, he might, I don't necessarily even want Lash in my deck because I have multiple untargetable champions. I'm just going to take this comp. Here. Yeah, uh, I mean, I am kind of lacking off drift plays right now. So what I really want is some kind of uh, off turn card that I would just be happy to play randomly. Like Dark Offering, at least I can play to draw to. I'm just going to take both of these. I think Temporal Shift would also be reasonable here. But uh, I, I like the idea of putting pressure on my opponent with the zero cost deck in a deck that has a lot of green cards because I'll often have Punishers if I'm playing green. In fact, I will be taking this Draping Dragon. It's just so good for me. That Vanishing is also very strong, but I really, this card is just going to be amazing in this deck. Uh, it'll be a Punisher, which we don't really have any of, and it'll also be, um, so I'm gonna take actually this No Escape here over the Memory Spirit, uh, and then because uh, it is something that I can do to draw two cards, and also I have some pretty good events, so I might take the Memory Spirit over the Arcane Research. I'm actually not as excited about Arcane Research as a lot of people are. Um, I mean, it is it is quite good uh, for what it does, but the Memory Spirit, I, I have no off-turn threats except for Strafing Dragon mm -hmm. and Crystal Golem, and the No Escape I can play to draw two cards. Uh, okay, so... This is also a tough pack. The Brachiosaurus is very good in this in this deck. So it might be the Brachiosaurus. All right, we're just gonna hope the game doesn't go long because I have no way to banish their discard pile. All right, then I'm gonna take this Brave Squire, which I really like. And... Um, Saren or the Force Mage. I think the Force Mage. We have no way, we don't have a lot of ways to kill small things right now. So I did get greedy there by, by not taking the uh, the uh, Hanes Feast, but I'm assuming that this game will be not very long because we have a very aggressive deck. Alright, so the enemy is going to be going first, so I'm probably going to want to play this Crystal Golem, almost definitely. I'm going to toss this Dark Offering because it's not, not very useful in my deck, except as a draw two. And I'll hold on to pretty much everything else. I can also toss this Frantic Digging because I'm very unlikely to get use out of it this early in the game because it has Recycle, so I need two cards by discard pile. This Marcus is probably just going to sit in my hands until he hopefully plays something that makes me discard it. <laughs> and then I'll get to play it for free. But that's pretty much the only reason I took this card. I don't think I'll ever play it unless my opponent happens to have three demons in play. But that's pretty much the only reason. Alright, they passed, which is fine with me. I'm going to... Toss down this rescue griffin. Let's, let's just start attacking our opponent for three. Would you like to do something about that? I could try and get three, two other good cards, but I think I, the only other good card I have is a Brave Squire. A Brave Squire, Quell, Watchful Arc Oil. So it'll be pretty tough. 
All right, we're just gonna start hitting our opponent. All right, now we're gonna pass. Go play the Sea Titan. We're turning the Rescue Griffin into my hand. I mean, it's honestly not even that bad. This card is actually really big on targetable champions are harder to deal with than they appear to be. So, yeah, I mean, the fact that he's just taking it kind of just makes me want to stay in this position because uh, he couldn't deal with it last turn. And also he couldn't, uh, he didn't do anything on my turn. So, I mean, if I'm just going to keep hitting him for three, then I'm just going to wait until he does something. All right, he's going to play this and just attack me for 10 here. Fair enough. All right, that is pretty good against us because we have no way to stop it, which means that we're gonna take 10. All right, and then I'm gonna drop down this Crystal Golem and then we're gonna be the one attacking him. Now, uh, Crystal Golem is a little unfortunate in that it dies to some various things, but uh, that can't be helped. I'm gonna attack with it because uh, it, would be, it would be silly for me not to attack with it. Basically, the advantage of hitting him with it is really high, but the disadvantage, uh, if he does get to clear it for zero, then I would be pretty sad. But uh, I, it basically, there's a Heinous Feast and, not Heinous Feast, um, Hands from Below and Spike Trap deal damage to each attacking champion. So uh, it would be able to hit this even though it's untargetable. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what he does here. Hopefully he doesn't have exactly one of those two in his hand. Uh, I think he mulligan three. Okay, well he did. All right, but we are going to uh, play this Sea Titan here and return that Rescue Griffin to hand just to make it so this card doesn't really do anything anymore. He could have exactly winged death. That would be the perfect answer to the Sea Titan, would be winged death. Or maybe smash and burn on that. Five, yeah, no, that wouldn't do it. You can drop to a fumble. All right, sounds good. Probably gonna end up playing this Hunting Raptors on their turn. Well, we might actually be able to get this Marcus if it just sits in our hand for a while. So let's hope that it's not Wing Death. That's the plan. All right, it's got Silver Dragon, that's fine. Draw card. It is pretty big, I'll admit. But also, we're gonna shoot you for four damage. Now I might just be able to, to get him down really fast here because the it really piles up how much for how much the damage you take. So he's at 13 right now. He can't really afford to take 11 from the C Titan. Now the perfect answer here would be Lion in Wait, which banishes a, a, a champion if it is attacking alone. But uh, it's very unlikely that he has Lion in Wait in his hand. Otherwise, you could just play a small thing. Yep, that's great. Sounds good. Uh, now, I think what we're going to do here is just um, not play anything else. He's in a tough spot. What we're going to do is, if that attacks, we're going to play this ooh, inner piece. All right. I like the way that that's going. All right, so, I mean, it's not good for me, but it's a good play. <laughs> All right, so uh, from here, um, we could play Lightning Storm plus Wither to kill that. That seems kind of sketchy. I'm going to draw to a Slash Fire. I'm probably going to do something with Rescue Griffin on their turn. So now Marcus actually has loyalty too. All right. Now this uh, is just going to keep coming back. It's going to make our game plan completely different. We can't burn him out anymore because we... We skimped on the graveyard discard and the discard pile, uh, hate, unfortunately. All right, so I think we're gonna do this. We're gonna play this rescue Griffin, and then pass to his, to his blockers. And this wither is going to give his attacker a minus three attack, so it's the six, so it doesn't kill our rescue Griffin. Again, this is a very greedy play. I'm making a greedy play here. But, I mean, 
we want to make greedy plays because I think that we're actually far, we're actually a bit behind in this game. Even though we have more stuff in play, that could very easily change with the board wipe, and uh, this inner piece is going to make our life difficult because we don't have any way to interact with it in our deck. All right, so there he's passing. So I could lightning storm to hit that and him, but I think it's not worth it. I'm just going to start my turn. Now the real question is, do I shoot him for four or not? And I think the answer is yes. Uh, yeah, let's do it. And I'm going to get in uh, for 11 on the ground. Let's see what he does. Now my expectation here is that he's going to play some kind of off turn board wipe. Like, uh, like martial law. Or, in, or Inheritance of the Meek. That's what I'm expecting. All right, Insurgency for four human tokens. All right, well, we have some value today. <laughs> we are going to banish all zeros and draw a card. All right, yep. Let's see if we get in. If we get in, then we're in business. We might just win off this. All right, opponent has Courageous Soul, that's fine. We're trying to do some kind of token strategy, but we were not having it. We were not having it. All right, uh, I could get in for five. I don't want to. I'm just gonna try and block uh, that attack with the Watchful Gargoyle. Uh, yeah, that's it. If our opponent keeps taking turns to inner peace, then we're fine with that. This Sea Titan is actually threatening in that my, our opponent keeps spending cards to uh, deal with it. So they play that Insurgency and we played this Quell, and it canceled their Insurgency, and we drew a card. It also got rid of our own uh, Watch of Gargoyle. I mean, not Watch of Gargoyle. Um, Pegasus, unfortunately. So I'm just going to eat two cards and try and use this to block that attack so that we don't take any damage. It's a perfectly reasonable we don't jump block here in the sense that uh, if we don't take any damage from this attack, then... Uh, our board is really threatening, so our opponent has to kind of do something about it. All right. It's fine, they're probably gonna pass here. Oh, they're gonna gain 10. And the real question is, how greedy do I want to be? I could kill this with Lightning Storm. Our opponent knows that we have Lightning Storm. I think I do. All right, Lightning Storm, taking him down. I just did a special move there, dragged from the Lightning Storm to the card. Uh, yeah, it works pretty well. So we're going to shoot for four here, because I am... I, I generally play pretty conservatively with my Hunting Raptors. I'm just assuming that he's going to board wipe here. That's my assumption. A board wipe is coming. All right, ceasefire. That's fine. Hopefully that he doesn't have, uh, like, a... Oh, yeah. That's deal 11. All right. Sounds good. And then we will probably just draw two cards because we want more options. I mean, this Lightning Storm has, has been pretty nice for us. Uh, our opponent is probably going to have to board clear this. I mean, we could drop this Citadel Scholar down just in case they have like a Blitz Champion and they want to try and hit us. Well, we can always play this Dark Knight if it's really dire, I think. So the real question is, do we want two new random cards? Yes, we do. We want to draw those really good wild cards. That Lightning Storm... Well, our opponent seems to have gone more of a token strategy. So they picked up a lot of those token cards. I think we're going to want this Lightning Storm in our hand. So I'm going to recall the Lightning Storm. It's a little... Uh, it's a little iffy. I mean, we're not going to deal six to our opponent to kill them anytime soon because they have the inner piece, but I'm happy to keep threatening to kill our opponent. It's a very powerful thing to threaten the of lethal, even if you aren't actually going to take it, because then if the opponent has to play defensively, they have to keep spending their gold to gain 10 health, and then that means they're not doing that anything else with that gold. It's kind of like gaining 10 health draw card, because they're not, that card that they're playing isn't going anywhere from their hand, so doing damage to them is really inefficient. So this card that we're recalling is mainly going to be used to kill random small bodies that they try to play to chump this, uh, Sea Titan. So, things like Winter Fairy or um, the Gudgeon. They're going to play Angel of Light. It's going to draw them a lot of cards. They have Inner Peace and Urgent Messengers. 
So I am tempted to just lightning storm that, even though it's not very good card advantage, because then they will have to act first. So I think I will do that. Even though this play does seem kind of silly, I just really want my opponent next turn to play into this plague by playing Urgent Messengers. So I'm just going to play the Lightning Storm. Hopefully they don't banish the discard pile. Alright, so far so good. I'm going to deal 4 to that. Attack for 11. Now, if Urgent Messengers comes down here, then Plague is going to be amazing. Well, unless they Urgent Messengers plus Banish or Discard Pile, but that's not very likely. That would, be, that would require some Foresight. Are they going to play Revolt? Well, it's not great, but it's also really not the end of the world. They're going to pass. Let them do that. Pass back to them. Again, I'm taking this game very slowly here. I probably should be more aggressive because I have no way to manage to discard pile. Alright, so... We are going to probably have to draw two cards. Yeah, we are going to have to draw two cards. So we're going to play a Citadel Scholar. Cycling. This is pretty greedy here. And then draw two cards. Because our opponent, if they have a board clear, is going to definitely want to board clear now. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, I think that we're actually at, at this point in the game, we're now at danger of them drawing their entire deck. You win if you draw your entire deck. All right, we're gonna get their inner piece back. That's time we have good off-turn play. Grab back our no escape. Combo. Because, <laughs> you know, you can no escape back the memory series. <laughs> it's a little, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. I don't think that's gonna be the play, but maybe, maybe something special will happen. We'll get in for five here. I don't think our opponent's going to do anything about this attack. We're going to play Urgent Messengers. It's interesting. I don't know what they're digging for. Uh, sure. I hate you. I think that we're going to Plague them. This is a good turn to Plague. This might even be a good turn to Marcus, funnily enough, even though we've I've kind of been talking about how I probably wouldn't Marcus. But honestly, they're just not really anything crazy good to play this turn. Our opponent does seem like they're trying to just draw a lot of cards. Do we have any way to banish in our deck? We just have Quell, so we gotta get a lot of, we gotta banish a lot of his champions for Quell. <laughs> That's how we're gonna do it. All right, we're gonna play this just to uh, force our opponent to do something about our, our champions. Um, even though it doesn't actually really do that much. Could also attack with Thrasher Demon, but old habits die hard. Play very, I play. I like to, to play the game kind of more slow paced to try and conserve resources, but it might that might be incorrect. All right, I think what we're going to do is play this plague. Unfortunately, could also draw two with no escape. It might be hard to get value out of this card. All right, pretty weak turn for us. All right, coming in for five. Um, it's just calling that. We want to hold on to the Brachiosaurus so that we can strip and dragon. Pass. I play Angel of Mercy. All right. Well, they're gonna get back some. They're probably gonna get back uh, the uh, the Angel of Light to gain ten. So unfortunately, because I can't deal with that, I'm just gonna start swinging some stuff with them. Just so that if they want a board clear, if he wants the board clear on on his next turn, he'll have to take out the new stuff, the new thing that he just got. No, broadcast loud and clear that I don't have an answer to that angel of mercy, even though I have two. So that hopefully he'll play as though we don't have an answer to that angel of mercy. <laughs> That's where we're at right now. It's hope. <laughs> <laughs> starting they get to return something we're sad that we don't have any way to banish the discard pile on our deck angel of light does come back in game 10 go up to 22 it's gonna be a tough game we're gonna try and win though so far no cards have been banished in his deck <laughs> oh man 
Ooh, drop is fire to clear our board. That is not good. It's alright though. We are going to play a striking dragon. We gotta take that out. Pronto. Ooh, we're still in it. Opponent still has that inner piece, so they can just gain 10 whenever they feel especially threatened. But we're gonna come in for six first. I have to play around Ceasefire because it's already been played. The goal was to put enough pressure on him that, uh, oh, well, that wasn't great. But the goal was to put enough pressure on him that, uh, uh, basically we, uh, he doesn't have time to play things like game tens, but, uh, that didn't work. <laughs> All right, we could fire the Rebellion here. I don't think it's that ridiculous. I don't think it's really worth, I mean, I don't just want to have this. Well, he's probably holding on to a Sea Titan right now. I think that burning that and then attacking for 13 is reasonable, but definitely somewhat risky. We're gonna do this. And then, uh, yep, he's gonna attack for 13. Probably does have some kind of ambush champion here. Oh, Ace Retreat. I mean, that, that's fine with me, that's okay. The worst thing in the world, getting my coin back to my hand. Um, but we're kind of in a tough spot, I think. I don't really want to play that out. It's a pretty weak play right here. Now, I was punished for not playing the Brachiosaurus because uh, this got returned to my hand. I was expecting a uh, free ambush champion. So I think here we just have to push, even though this I would normally consider this to be a bad play, I just I want to put pressure on him. I'm, I would normally consider it a bad play because uh, it isn't getting value out of killing a champion that has two health. So if you played like a blue dragon here, this would be absolutely terrible for me. All right, reusable knowledge to draw a card and return back Angel of Mercy. Well, gonna hate beast me. All right, yeah, I think this game is over, but we'll play it out. Uh, yeah. Well, this plague has become a lot worse, but we're so we're just gonna erase so that we can draw two cards. Hmm. And Brachiosaurus and then Raging T-Rex to draw two. Uh, it's not really what we want to be doing, unfortunately. Probably gonna have to be Brachiosaurus Fire Spirit to draw a card. Yep. All right, so we have frantic digging. Don't know what we want to be digging for. Hmm. Definitely punished for not playing that, uh, that, for not taking that heinous feast in the last pack. That's for sure. All right, uh, I'm just going to pass. I don't have to discard two here. All right, it's actually fine. No big deal. Of course, he, now, uh, so when you draw your deck, he wins, so he's probably just gonna try and turbo drop his last six. He might be playing around the fact that I have Grave Demon or something, and I'm just holding it back this whole time. <laughs> I'm just I'm just baiting him into drawing two cards as much as possible. In an ideal world, here he would play something with five health that's not Angel of Death. Angel Death would be bad for us, but like a succubus. Alright. Yeah, see, I didn't actually expect the last to be very good in this deck. At least I was correct there. Inner piece to gain 10. Alright. Well, we're gonna frantic digging because we want to play on the opponent's turn. Uh, yeah. I mean, we could play this flag to draw two cards, but I'm not very excited about that. Honestly, I'm not even excited about this Raging T-Rex, but I think we want to hold on to green cards so that we can actually finish the game. So it's probably going to be discard Raxa. Don't expect that card to be useful. I don't want to discard this plague in case we get nothing. So I'm going to just chuck two cards over these two. Uh, all right, and then for here, yeah. Probably gonna have to just plague. No, 
all right. Probably should play the rescue griffin. It's all right though. Hopefully the opponent doesn't win by three. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that that's gonna happen now. Would they, would they bring back the reusable? No. Oh, it's Angel of Mercy. I think that play was was greedy. I think that uh, the best thing for them to get back would have probably been Urgent Messengers, or maybe Fumble. All right. Well, we're getting some damage in. That's good to see. Maybe they're just saving something. It's, you can't just block this with a 1-1 one -one because it has Breakthrough. Well, we do have a way to banish cards now from their from their pool, so that's good. I think that we have to pass because we can't... We don't want them to spend their gold to draw two cards here. That would be very bad. Unfortunately, we just don't have any threats to deploy on their turn, which is unfortunate. We could play this Raging T-Rex. I don't think it's worth it. Because if they just play three draw twos, then we lose, so... I mean, if they play a draw two right now, that's okay. If they don't, then, uh... They don't have the inner piece to play, so... Yep, that's a draw two. Call my bluff. Well, it was effectively called. We're gonna play Raging T-Rex and draw two cards then. Probably just reveal... We, they know that we already have the Kong and the Forked Lightning. Those have been revealed very much earlier. Four damage does have to be dealt to a champion. The Brachiosaurus is unlikely to die eight health. Yeah, ability is not optional. And then we are just going to discard some cards. It's going to be close. Can we get rid of uh, Dark Offering? Because we can draw two with Flash Fire if we need to. We want to keep, 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 keep. Um, probably have to keep Quell, unfortunately. And then we'll keep uh, Wither. Maybe Fork Lightning. No, Wither's, Wither's very good. All right. Unfortunately, we don't have another wild card for the Sunny Raptors, but I think this is still the play. I'm keeping this wither in case uh, in case something that chumps this is what prevents us from from winning. Oh, for keeping a fork lightning, which would also be reasonable. I might regret that. Oh, sorry, it's uh, three cards left. I can move that. Wait, is that still good? Does that work? All right, there we go. Now you can see. Three cards left. All right, they just played that card, um, which means I'm gonna play this card to recycle. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, there is three cards left. All right. Fortunately, this card is unbanishable, so we can't use Quell on it to uh, Stop to well the bleeding here. Uh, so, we're probably gonna have to draw. Well, I don't really want to draw two cards of Flash Fire in this position. Hmm. Man, I, I, do, I do regret now uh, having tossed that. But I think that uh, we just have to go for the Hunting Raptors here. That uh, Forked Lightning. Because I want to, really want to deal four damage to that and get it out of the way here. So, we're gonna do that. Just be sad. I'm gonna spend some cards to remove it and hope that the opponent completely whips. Oh, I also forgot to play that rescue griffin. All right, hopefully they don't, <laughs> we have six damage overkill because so far that is the damage that has been lost by misplaying. All right, so uh, we're gonna go in with uh, Brachiosaurus first. It has breakthrough, or sorry, I'm gonna shoot the opponent for four first. Brachiosaurus has breakthrough, so uh, it's difficult to block efficiently. Yeah. This is where lesson learned would just completely ruin my day. That would be replaying the, uh, the ceasefire. Or an off turn board clear, that would probably also win them the game. I guess we'll see. 
We do we do potentially have lethal pretty easily here. I could have brave squired on raging T-Rex before attacking. I think that would also be reasonable. That way, if my opponent plays uh, surprise attack into um, angel of death, I guess that plays around that. But uh, it's pretty, or it would also plays around zombie apocalypse because we have flash fire. But those are pretty two narrow cases. Of course, now we're gonna get we're gonna get blown up by zombie apocalypse. All right, <laughs> this is a very close game. You could really go either way. Inner peace. All right, they're just gonna they're just gonna pray, literally. All right, they're gonna take eight. That's fine. Um. Yeah, let's get a two in the air. Oh wow, our timer is really ticking. Okay, we have to we have to we have to move. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to uh, Citadel Scar and recycle and draw some cards quickly. They don't actually care about it surviving. Um, ooh, this Marcus could get some value. No, I should just play this. No, no, I should play the Marcus. No, no I should just play this. All right, I'm just playing this. All right, let's attack for 12. See what the opponent does. Oh, wow. I shouldn't have battle passed. That was a mistake. Oh, wow. That was also a surprise. Okay, well, I guess we got there. <laughs> you don't want to lose on time. It's true. We had 19 seconds left. That was very close. <laughs> okay, well, that was a very surprising game. That was a close game, so good game, Cutter. I'll be giving you some gems after the stream ends. What time is it? Which will be pretty soon. Uh, I think that maybe I could just, uh, but, uh, uh, let's see, we could make like another constructed deck or something for the next, the next time, or I could, uh, maybe see if there's anybody on for, for random, for, uh, one of these other, I'll just jump into each of these cues and, uh, if any of them pop, then, if any of them pop, then. Uh, real quick, then we'll just uh, do whichever one does. Uh, let's do that deck that we... Oh, there we go. One gold. Gould? Man, I'm probably completely butchering that name. All right. Uh, enemy turn. I like that avatar. Erratic research. So we're just going to toss... Uh, we're just going to toss this warrior golem. Now, uh, this is a good way to wrap it up, the stream, I think, with the uh, random 30. This is the kind of thing that, uh, basically, when you're playing, it uh, it's super easy. There's no, um, you don't have to, to build your deck or draft ahead of time. You just click on the random 30 button, and then you just have a deck. So I think that uh, it is really nice just if you want to get into it and, and try playing around with the cards without without knowing how what anything is good or bad. Uh, it's a good way just to get started. Yeah, that was a nice clean game, Cutter. <laughs> or Matt. I'm not sure which you prefer, Matt or Cutter. Your, uh, your alias. I thought for sure you were going to clinch that one out. I did not have any any discard pile banishment. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Well, we can just we can just do another one. I didn't actually I didn't actually pick a deck for constructed. I'm trying to figure that out. We can just do the one that we were working on last time with the final tasks. Um and uh in the meantime, you can just work on a deck here. Basically, uh, um, I mean, asynchronous is kind of interesting playing the the asynchronous mode because I find it much more relaxing uh, and less serious when you're playing game mode where there's no timer. But uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes that means people will take super long turns. And I don't know, I mean, 
I personally really enjoy taking very long turns, but I know that uh, some people <laughs> don't. <laughs> Is there no game timer? In uh, asynchronous, there is a game timer, but it's very long. So if I just do, I mean, I can just do a real time, uh, but dark drafts generally just take a while compared to the other game modes like random 30. And in my experience, most of the people that are in random 30 are just trying to get a feel for, the, for it. So there's much less people in the random 30 uh, real time queue as there are in the, in the 40 hour queue. But that's just been my experience. I haven't actually, um, it's mostly anecdotal, uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have any way to touch your discard pile. I didn't have amnesia or heinous feast or erratic research or anything. I didn't have, I even have guilt demon. I just, uh, I was just thinking I'll just deal damage. But then you had the perfect counter. Yeah, usually when people play async mode, they just play, uh, if that makes sense. So in my experience, when I play an async game, it's usually just a game where people want to play without having a game timer, which is reasonable for people that are just learning what the cards are. Like a lot of the time what I'll do is if I play against someone in real time and, and it seems like they are struggling against the timer, then I'll just challenge them um, to a game, to whatever game mode we were playing. Uh, like if we're doing a dark draft and the time runs out on them on their pick twice, I just I just restart the game as a challenge because some people just jump right into a real time game, but they don't actually uh, realize that uh, um, that there is going to be a timer on their picks, or they're trying to read what the cards do for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, we're, we'll upload it to YouTube probably uh, at some point, but uh, I think you can see it on Twitch, right? Oh yeah, nice. But that was great. That was a great game. I, for, I thought for sure that you were going to win. Um, so I think I'm just going to call it here because uh, if I get into a game, then uh, it might end up going very long. This game's an epic can be really variable in length. Uh, so if we, due to packs, I'm not going to be streaming uh, for the rest of the week since uh, our booth will be there on Wednesday and uh, or I'll be helping set up on Wednesday and I'll also be there on Friday. Uh, so I'll be seeing anyone, I'll be seeing the rest of you all uh, next week on Monday. Uh, and so that'll be all. And uh, good luck with your games. That was a good game to end on and uh, good night.